On November 13, 1985, the Nevado del Ruiz volcano erupted in Colombia. Pyroclastic flows exploding from the crater melted the mountain's ice caps, forming lahars, volcanic mud flows and debris flows which cascaded into the river valleys below. One lahar, consisting of three pulses, did most of the damage. Traveling at 20 feet per second, the first pulse enveloped most of the town of Armero, killing up to 20,000 people. In total, 23,000 people were killed, and 13 villages in addition to Armero were destroyed. Since there had been no substantial eruption since 1845, officials dismissed safety and evacuation planning. To make things worse, Armero and many other villages were in the path of the volcano's destruction. Two months before the main eruption, earthquakes and phreatic eruptions rocked the area around the volcano, and that's when officials finally began planning for evacuation. A hazard map was prepared in October, but the map was poorly distributed to those at highest risk. Many survivors had never heard of it, though several major newspapers had featured it. Omira Sanchez and her family lived in Armero at the time of the eruption. On the night of the disaster, Omira and her family were awake, worrying about the ashfall from the eruption, when they heard the sound of an approaching lahar. After it hit, Omira became trapped under the concrete and debris of her home and could not free herself. When rescue teams tried to help her, they realized her legs were trapped under the house's roof. Sanchez was immobilized from the waist down, but her upper body was free of the concrete and mud. For the first few hours after the mud flow hit, she was covered by concrete, but managed to get her hand through a crack in the debris. After a rescuer noticed her hand protruding from a pile of debris, he and others cleared tiles and wood over the course of a day. Once the girl was freed from the waist up, her rescuers attempted to pull her out, but found the task impossible without breaking her legs in the process. Each time a person pulled her, the water pooled around her, rising so that it seemed she would drown if they let her go so rescue workers placed a tire around her body to keep her afloat. Divers discovered Sanchez's legs were caught under a door made of bricks, with her aunt's arms clutched tightly around her legs and feet. Despite her predicament, Sanchez remained relatively positive. She sang to a journalist who was working as a volunteer, asked for sweet food, drank soda, and agreed to be interviewed. At times, she was scared and prayed or cried. On the third night, Sanchez began hallucinating, saying she did not want to be late for school and mentioned a math exam. Near the end of her life, Sanchez's eyes reddened, her face swelled, and her hands whitened. At one point, she asked the people to leave her so they could rest. Hours later, the workers returned with a pump and tried to save her, but her legs were bent under the concrete as if she was kneeling, and it was impossible to free her without severing her legs. Lacking the surgical equipment to save her from the effects of an amputation, the doctors present agreed that it would be more humane to let her die. Sanchez suffered for nearly three nights before she died on the morning of November 16th from exposure, most likely from gangrene or hypothermia. Omira's brother and mother survived. Her father and sister did not. Her mother expressed her feelings about Omira's death. It is horrible but we have to think about the living. I will live for my son, who only lost a toe.